Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're taking a look at this JunkTech KG110F battery monitor. So this is one of these uh, energy in, energy out monitors that use a shunt. Uh, and the plan is to use this to uh, test out capacity of batteries, but you can do all sorts of stuff. You can track uh, solar or whatever because it is bi-directional as far as I know. And here's what you get in the box with a little bit of an asterisk. So first of all, you've got the main unit here. So everything is in here. Um, and you've got uh, RS-485 link that you can use for uh, external stuff. But you also have a link for the display, a, very, a separate one. Uh, then you got temperature sensor, current sensor, and output control. Output control is for a different module that is not included in the kit. Uh, here is your little screen, and here's where the little connection is. There are little tabs to mount it into a panel, uh, and there's little holes that you can put screws through. And then here is the shunt that is included. Now these wires are not included. These are wires that I added on a live stream uh, in order to make this work for the video. So if you want to check that out, link to the live stream channel down in the description. But yeah, basically this will have to go onto your um, power supply or your batteries negative and then your load positive on the battery positive and then it comes into here and then out to the negative. So this actually checks the negative side of your circuit. Here's a little um, temperature probe. You would put this either on your load or your battery to tell you the temperature of whatever you want to monitor. And then you got the wiring. So you've got a very short cable for the shunt. So the deal is that the shunt would be really close to this unit here. Then you've got a really long cable. You know, this is just like a phone cable for your display. So your display can be mounted remotely. And then you've got this little green connector that plugs into the module here. And it does not come with wires. It says uh, vSense, V external, and ground. So the V external is the power for this unit, and the ground is the ground. Uh, the vSense, either if it's powered by the same device that you're using, uh, then you can just link the vSense and the V external together, uh, which is what I did here. Or you can use this to to uh, take the current or take the voltage sensing off of a different battery. So you can power this off its own power supply if you don't want this thing to affect your readings. I don't think it's that big of a deal. So that's why I just linked the vSense over here with the uh, V external. And then here is the ground. So that's my setup here. Let's put this together and uh, see what it looks like. Got everything all hooked up here. So the shunt just goes into this hole, temperature sensor in this hole, uh, RS-485 display there, and then your display. Uh, the only bad part is the display doesn't lay flat, so I have to kind of hold it. Um, but we are powered by this little harness. The V-Sense and V-External are going to the positive, and the negative is going to the black here. Uh, I forgot what the max voltage is for this, but I'll put it on screen, you know, down here somewhere. And if we just turn this on, comes right up to life right away. It says connected to the shunt and everything. And everything's reading fine because we've got, you know, zero current essentially. And the read-in is reading uh, 0.07 amps, so 70 milliamps. So that must be the current that this whole thing needs in order to sort of work by itself. So that is, you know, the parasitic draw of the system is about 70 milliamps. So it's not something you're going to want hooked up to a source that doesn't continuously regenerate like solar power or whatever. Um, if you're just strictly using this on battery power, eventually it will die. So not, not too, not the end of the world, but Hey, let's, uh, you know, it is what it is. Um, so for the amp hours, the battery level sensor and the total amp hours, I think these are things you need to set in the settings. We're not going to be playing with that on this first look today because uh, I do believe that you set them and then you run your battery down and then you run your battery up and then it uh, it then knows all about it. So it's not something we're going to do right now. Uh, menu is just hitting the set so you can set pretty much everything you need on here over voltage, over current, all this kind of stuff. Um, now this I don't I do not think this is a switched shunt uh, so it doesn't control 
in and out, but I believe that the output control is what does that. So if you see the overcurrent protections and stuff, that's more for when you have the output here. So you can see there's a lot of stuff and then you hit set to go back out. Okay to mess with the settings. We don't need to mess with that right now. Uh, voltage looks very accurate. See, 12 volts on the dot, 12 volts on the dot. And this read-in power supply is quite accurate. We have tested that in the past. So now all we have to do is jerry-rig a little bit of a load for this and see how it reacts. All right, so here's our setup. So we're all plugged in as we were before, but I went to get a, a cheap a 3D printer hot end. I have no idea what the wattage of this cartridge is. They're usually around 40 watts, but we're about to find out. Um, so it is plugged in already to the positive here, and then the negative end, if I just plug this in here, it'll work. But if I plug it through the shunt, then we should be able to see the current delivered by the read-in and what's being read by the junk tech. So here it goes. I'm just going to put it in this way go here. There we go. So immediately, 3.63 amps, and this says uh, 3.63. Seven. So actually, the uh, the 70 milliamps of difference that we saw for this thing is what we're actually seeing is the difference between these two readings, roughly 70 milliamps. So this is actually working pretty well. And as you can see, our amp hour remaining is counting down. Or maybe you can't see. Hopefully you can see. Our remaining is counting down. And um, our estimated... Uh, time left and our total amp hours used everything is counting up we also have our wattage 43.92 watts this is getting uh, toasty so I can't do this for too long um, so it's a you know roughly 45 watt load oh there's some smoke coming up so we're gonna do this quickly and um, so yeah so this will actually do all the counting for you let's check the shunt shunt is staying cool that's nice and also Touching it isn't affecting the reading, which is very good. And um, yeah, this thing seems to be working perfectly. So as you saw from that helpful demo, it does seem to work quite fine. I can't wait to get this plugged into a battery to see all the features. But I just thought I'd show you a couple of uh, extra features. If you press the up and the down at the same time, it turns off the display. And then the current draw goes down to about 20 to 30 milliamps. So you can cut the current draw in half by turning off the display. Now I'm not sure if the display turns off by itself because I have left it here for several minutes unattended and it didn't turn off but that's you know something for uh, figuring out once I uh, once I play with this a little bit more. And if you hold down up for a few seconds and let go you can uh, calibrate your shunt to read zero. This one already reads zero so I don't need to do that. And if you hold down for a couple seconds and let go, then you can clear the data on the screen if you'd want. So there, my total amp hours is now reset. Um, also, if you press and hold set and let go, there's this position. And I'm not sure what this is. It might be memory storage. Um, that'll be for the review to figure out. But as you can see, like it's quite interesting what this thing is. And then obviously in this menu, you would, this is where you would set, you know, your amp hour rating of your battery. Um, uh, the remaining here is to tune it if you know better, like if you're, if you can figure it out better. And then your screen brightness, which, uh, you know, really should be all the way up for me. So, okay, and put it all the way up. Doesn't make very much difference between 80% uh, and 100%, but it does something. Did the current go up? Yeah, now we have 80 milliamps of uh, draw. So, be aware that your your uh, bright your volt your screen brightness will affect your uh, draw, and then we go back to there, and there we go. Another thing to take note is that this is the 100 amp uh, maximum version, but it does come with a 200 amp shunt. You probably can't see that, but it says 200 amps right on the side here. Uh, you can get these up quite high. I decided to get a 100 amp version because I figured you'd get a little bit more resolution down low and um, you're typically testing batteries at about 10% of their capacity. So if I'm building a 100 uh, amp hour lithium battery, I'm going to do long term testing at 10 amps. And so 10 should be, you know, plenty, uh, but I can push it and go all the way up to, you know, pulling 1C. Um, however, 
if you if you're the type to use really big battery banks or like the server racks or whatever you might need the higher current one it might be more important for you this is also really good to keep an eye on how much load is on your system you know because you've got the watts and the kilowatt hour metering right there so this is something that can be installed in permanence in your setup and it that might be the way I'm going to use it especially with the remote display where I can have the display sort of like in this room and the battery pack in another room but if you've got different use for it let me know in the comments below um, this thing will have a full review at some point once I get to use it a little bit more you can't review a product unless you have some bench time with it and so um, that's enough for today thanks for watching